So I want to do an introduction of uh, what we are doing and what is exactly the VMS. I think you can see my, my screen now. Yeah, my presentation. Um, so I will do this introduction of VMS and uh, what is the transect methodology. And later, uh, Martin Warren, my colleague, will continue explaining to you about um, uh, starting uh, introductory and butterflies uh, identification. So I think is really, really useful. Um, yeah, from my side to start in the in the contest, uh, what we are facing, well, uh, Martin mentioned it, but I think the majority of us, we know we are in a current um, uh, biological crisis. No, we have a, a loss of biodiversity and especially insects are declining uh, so much that there have been recent uh, scientific papers uh, showing that and uh, making in a way an alarm of we need to take care more of our insects. However, we don't have, we have not been studying much insects for a long time. Uh, and in some cases we don't have long-term studies. So we don't know exactly the population situation. There are of course many, sorry, many causes of this uh, lost and if, share between the majority of uh, animals in general and uh, biodiversity. So the intensive agriculture is affecting negatively uh, land use change. So uh, converting uh, land in other uh, purposes and then we lost the habitat and of course climate change. But how we can research the decline of insects So where we can start? Um, we could monitor insects, but these are the largest uh, proportion of animals in the uh, in the land. So it's quite complicated to to monitor all the insects. No, there are many, many a thousand of species. Um, so we need to select some kind of uh, bioindicators, no, like kind of a, a, an umbrella uh, group to make able to understand what is going on with insects. And for that, we use butterflies as an indicators because they have really good uh, qualities to use it for this purpose, to know how other uh, terrestrial insects are doing. They have a short life uh, with several stages that we know, the, the egg, pupae, uh, caterpillar, and adult. So it's nice to know uh, the different aspect of these uh, stages, they respond rapidly to changes. So something happened one year, we could be able to see next year, more or less on the population of the butterflies. We are well informed of their ecology and the whole life history because yeah, there have been many entomologists uh, studying it. And they are quite easy to observe. They are beautiful, they are colorful. So we can uh, record butterflies and identifying them with a bit of uh, training. And in general, they are great in, uh, they are popular in the society. So it, that allow us to involve citizen science for butterflies. And now the, the question is which um, method to use no, to monitor butterflies, because there are many different ways of, of doing. And um, we need to select a, a, a method that is systematic and regular for able to be, uh, to produce robust data and results. So for example, here I show you in this graph, the trend of uh, one species, a Gladiurtica, and how it's doing through different uh, years and the comparison with uh, 2020, no? So we, Thanks to monitoring in a long term, we could know how, for example, this butterfly is doing in a certain area or region. Um, uh, with this monitoring, we could uh, uh, also evaluate different policies that could help and determine solutions in conservation for, for improving the butterfly uh, population. So which method we will use? It has been used, uh, the methodology most common for butterflies is transect, that is a fixed root. Uh, it's a standardized method. Um, it has just a few rules to use, so it's quite simple to train people on how to do it. Uh, for me, I think it's really important that brings people to nature, so you generate the routine of doing your transect. And at the same time, it provides us uh, really good uh, results. I will explain more about the, the transect, but first I wanted to, 
uh, to say something about the history of uh, the, the, the transit, how everything started. The first uh, butterfly monitoring scheme started in the 17th in United Kingdom by this uh, person, Ernie Pollard, who was the one deciding the rules of the transit. And I started to create several of these butterfly transit in UK. Um, with that, they created the UK BMS, the first one. And this uh, system of monitoring butterfly was quite popular um, based on citizen science and, of course, expert supervising. And it was exported to other countries. So it started to grow. And in more countries like in Germany, Spain, uh, Netherlands, Ireland, or many others have started to grow the creation of this uh, VMS and the number of transits. So you can see on the graph in, in blue, the number of transits since the 90s, how has been growing and uh, the number of schemes as well growing a lot. So in 2014, all the different countries uh, creating these uh, BMS, these schemes for monitoring butterflies. And in 2014, uh, Butterfly Conservation Europe and UK Center for Ecology and Hydrology decided to create EBMS, so the European Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, and basically to create the, um, a central database to, where, to put all the data together. And you can see the, the, on the map the number of transit that, that are currently active or has been recording data up to 2020. So you can see that the, the network is quite big. We are in 30 countries, 32 VMS. Uh, there are millions of data since the 70s. Uh, and there is really a lot of yeah, big numbers, no? More than 10,000 transit in all these 40 years. So it's quite a lot. And more than 300 uh, butterfly species. So we are doing well. There are in total around 500 species in Europe. So yeah, we are we are getting there. Yeah. <laughs> um, just uh, to show you that there were many countries joining, this is 2018, but we have a big issue that there were a big gap on the Eastern and Southern countries. We didn't have almost no, no transit. So in 2018, we got a European pilot project called AVOL. And with that, we were able to start promoting these butterfly monitoring schemes in, in these countries that they were lacking. So in two years, we were able to produce, uh, to create BMS in the countries you see in orange, and we were able to create a, a really nice uh, support and strength of the, of the network. While some other countries that they were recording started to share data uh, with us, and yeah, we consolidate the, the network. And now that we are in the current spring project, uh, our aim is to uh, create this butterfly monitoring scheme in the remaining countries that you see in gray. Uh, yeah, in this case, Slovakia is, is part of it. So we really want to create the VMS there, but you can see other countries like Denmark, that is impressive. They don't have it or <laughs> Romania or Greece, that they are really, and diverse countries no, that we need to, to have them in. Um, thanks to the European Pollinator Initiative uh, that it was uh, launched in uh, 2018, it set up also the, the basis to, um, to put more efforts on studying and understanding more the decline of pollinators in Europe. And thanks to this initiative, uh, yeah, it was created this project, the project that we are running at the moment, a Spring, that is coming for this long name, <laughs> that Sue created very well, but yeah, it's really long to say. <laughs> and basically the idea is to create, yeah, the it's going one step further, so not only recording butterflies, but other pollinators like bumblebees, bees, and hoverflies. And we have been doing for, for two years, or this is the third year, and yeah, we are putting the first steps to, to generate this uh, monitoring scheme where the butterflies and EVMS is, is part of it. And now I, I start to, to explain more how to do this transit methodology. So how is exactly how you can do the, the transit? So I just want to explain how, how easy it is. So just you can start uh, doing uh, soon if you want. 
Um, so this uh, transit uh, or polar works that is also called is basically a fixed route that you decide to have and, and to, to record butterflies on it and then you visit uh, frequently uh, during several years, we hope. How do you do this discount? So basically is to, to walk uh, in a slow and con constant pace, so you don't need to run or, or nothing, just to, to walk normally and count all the butterflies that you have in this imaginary box that I put you here, in like in this graph, is five meters above uh, in front of you and 2.5 every side, no? So in total is five meter of, of white. And then, well, every butterfly that cross this imaginary box, you count it inside of, of your transept. Of course, you can stop, so it's not necessary like you just walk uh, and don't stop never. You can just walk and check if there is a butterfly close that is perching or, or something. But the idea is that you don't come back or, or look behind of a butterfly or something like that. So the idea is going uh, farther. All, the, all these rules are uh, defined in the, um, in the butterfly transit uh, count manual that I will send you later. And also it was established in the first, uh, this, uh, the booking of the 19 week polars, no? defining this, this rule. So everything is, is written down. Where to choose your transit? We recommend normally to do it um, uh, close to your house or to your office. So then the probabilities of, uh, of recording are, are higher, right? And also you could help, um, you could be helped by, by your coordinator. In this case of uh, Slovakia, we are just starting, but we can help you on deciding where to, to select your, your transit or what is the best uh, to place it. We divide the transit in sections. So basically, if there are different habitats, uh, we consider different sections. So if you have a forest and then later there is a grassland, and the path change to asphalt, for example, we will consider each of them a different section. And then we count the butterflies per section. And we recommend it that not to be more than one kilometer because we need to work this uh, transit since the beginning in the spring, more or less. And then in summer can be quite demanding on time, no? if it's two kilometers or three kilometers. So better to keep it uh, short. And you can include, all, of course, the, the best areas of butterflies, but poor areas are also important. So even agricultural areas are, are also welcome. When to count, in general, the weather condition has to be good. So not a lot of wind or not super hot or not, not raining, of course. So there are some, some rules to do it. So the time is more or less between 10 and 4. But of course, depending on the country, it can vary a bit. So in the south of Europe in summer, it can be even after 4 or even below 10, before 10. The temperature above 13 de uh, degrees and no more than 35, because we are looking for the butterflies are flying, no, are, are active and a certain outside of this range you cannot uh, see butterflies uh, for the wind we use the bare for scale that basically is some sides of uh, of wind that you feel it on your skin or you see the some uh, um, branches moving or trees so then you can appreciate what is the the scale and also we record the the cloud cover so how much how many clouds are on the sky in a percentage how many visits uh, we should do uh, to this transit? Ideally, and the best will be every week in the flight period of the butterflies, but we understand um, that is difficult. So we also recommend it between in two weeks and 10 days um, to do the visit to the transit. So then the later the estimations uh, between one visit and another are not difficult, no, statistically. The flight periods depend also between in depending on the country. Uh, I think for Slovakia will be from now, no, from April until September, more or less. But in southern countries, it can be even longer. Or we have people in the Canary Island that there are counting the whole year. So that depends a little bit on the country. 
if it's not possible for you to to count butterflies in all these uh, months, no, so from the beginning of the spring and until the late the summer, I recommend normally to group your visit. So if you only count during the spring, okay, try to do all your visit in the spring or later on the summer. So there is not a big um, a space. And uh, as protocol, we have to say at least ten visit per year. So then. Uh, it would be a really nice transect uh, with data. And there are a lot of information to help you on how to identify the butterflies. Now Martin is going to explain very well how to do it, but yeah, there are books and, and really nice for Europe. And I'm thinking to produce a, a small field guide for Slovakia with the most uh, common species to help you. It can be used the, the butterfly nets because there are some places that it can be really rich on a species. So then you need to catch them. But maybe for that, you, you need permission. No, we, we could discuss about that. Take pictures is always a good uh, tip because then later you can take it at home. And even if the, the picture is not perfect, maybe if you see one point or one dot or, or the color, you could identify the butterflies. And I also recommend, yeah, you can search your pictures in online platforms like iNaturalis of Observado. I don't know if there is one really common. Yeah, Lepi, I don't remember now. Lepi Forum, no, it's, it's similar for Slovakia, uh, where you could search your, your pictures and other, other can help you to identify. Um, just on collecting the data, I'm going to talk shortly about this, but I can we can do another seminar of explaining you EVMS uh, tools, uh, how to use it, but basically you can record it on your notebook manually in the field, or you can use the butterfly count app directly on the field that we, that we created for this purpose. And at the end, all the data we would like to have submitted to, to the website of EVMS. And this is a, an example of one field seat on how it would look like. So here is the weather condition that I mentioned. So uh, the transect name, the day, the temperature, and so and so on. Then you register the species per section. And then if you have any comment of the transect, like something happened on the on the sections or in the whole transect, you can include it here. And then later put this information to the website. So this is the, the website, the European Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, that um, we have it available for the BMS that they, they wanted. We have it translated in many different languages, no the Slovakian yet, but we have checked. So I don't know if it can be useful for you. Um, but yeah, in English, you, you can see everything uh, and investigate it. So here you can record your transit, like you see here with different sections and put your data. And then we have also the Butterfly Count app that is uh, for free to download for Android and, and iPhones. And it's also translated to many languages. You can search by scientific names or common names. So it's quite handy. We have a small uh, guide to check uh, pictures of the, um, of the butterflies. And they even we have included uh, several lists, not only butterflies, but we have also moth, dragonflies, and bumblebees of Europe. So they are also possible to be recorded with this app. And you can use it offline. And well, we decided for transit, but also we have a really important survey that is 15 minute count. So only counting butterflies for 15 minutes, but we will discuss about it uh, later <laughs> in another seminar, maybe. Um, and yeah, yes, I'm finalizing uh, more or less. Um, I wanted to tell you that we are many people. We, you are not alone. This is happening many places in, in Europe. We are doing trainings in, in many countries to try to involve more volunteers in nature and count butterflies. And all this idea of um, getting a lot and a lot of data is for a really big purpose is because this data we translate it into um, butterfly trends. So we know how the different butterflies are doing. And thanks to that, we can create um, indicators of butterflies. So this is our most important uh, indicator, the grassland butterfly indicator, 
that tell us um, that since the 90s, we have been losing butterflies all this year. No? So this is a combination of all the transit, this in case in the EU and in the whole of Europe. And uh, we included 17 uh, characteristic grassland butterflies that they use the habitat to tell us information of how this habitat basically are doing in Europe. And yes, you could see there are a big decline uh, is happening. Yeah, sorry, I, I put it wrong, but there is yeah more people joining everywhere. We have uh, trainings and more and more people. Uh, so yeah, we would love to have a Slovakia VMS to be a reality. So to create it, this scheme, uh, we could start doing the translations of the EVMS tools into Slovakian. At the moment, they are in in Czech, so I, I don't know if it's uh, really similar to, to Slovakia. Maybe you could understand it, but anyways, we could create the Slovakian. We will support the, the coordinators if they appear. There are possibilities already. So yeah, we will support those people that will coordinate the, the volunteers. Um, also, we will generate a field guide of the most common species. So as you can see here in this picture, we generate this material to help volunteers. And maybe, yeah, we could teach uh, all these transect techniques in the field, creating more seminars and workshops to, to have more volunteers involved in the in Slovakia. Also, I didn't explain a lot about the EVMS tools, about the app and the website. I can do it in another seminar if you want. We could arrange it online. Uh, I will be super glad to, to teach you. And well, I hope we can involve Slovakia in our great uh, family of EVMS and with the idea of protect um, butterflies. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you like it. Um, and now I, I will stop sharing.